Well, welcome everyone. Oh, yay. I'm happy to see you joining in. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Say hello in the chat. Let us know where you are coming from. Oh my gosh. We have Switzerland, Colorado, Virginia. You're all over the world. We're going to unite the world today and we are going to unite as administrative office professionals because nothing keeps you folks down. I know that. Yes, please in, introduce yourself as you come into the room. So welcome to our webinar today, which is Understanding VUCA for Assistance. We're going to delve into this really deep topic today. It's a very, very timely topic. So I'm looking forward to going through this with you. Um, first of all, I just want to really thank you for participating today and for being a part of today's webinar. These are very strange and difficult times for all of us. And I am thrilled that we are going to unite as a global community of administrative office professionals. We're going to learn together today. We're going to share together. Um, and it's going to be just a great, great program today. So a couple of things. First of all, if you are working from home, how many of you are working for home, from home or are you working from home? Let me ask you that. Uh, let us know that. And we're going to do a survey shortly about that. But if you're working from home, a couple messages here, a couple notes. You may have trouble connecting with us depending on your internet provider and the speed of your internet. Also, since so many people are working from home, they're finding it a little difficult to connect. So I hope you can connect with us okay. Some other tips, don't uh, have other programs running on your computer. And um, anyone in your household, hopefully they aren't doing any streaming or gaming while you are on this webinar. So basically shut everything else down except this webinar. All right, I'm gonna go through a few logistics and then I'm gonna dig into today's program. The learning part of this session will be about 40 minutes and then we're going to open it up to questions. And I am really eager to see the questions that you have today. You can submit your questions anytime during this webinar. If you look in the lower right corner in the chat box, um, I think it's there down in chat mode or whatever, you could post your question and indicate it is a question. This way, Malia will be able to pull those up quicker at the end of the program, and then we can get through more of your questions. What else? Let's see. Webinar Jam holds about a thousand attendees in the chat. So if you didn't get in, you're still on. It just means you weren't able to get into the chat room. If you have any technical issues, the only way that we can help you is through the chat. So please let us know. My goodness, a lot of you are working from home and we're going to do an actual formal survey so we could see the numbers of you who are working from home. We will send a replay link after today's webinar, so you can do that. All right, let's get started. Are you ready? It's really interesting when you think about just a few months ago, we were all so excited about a new year, a new decade. We all came in with optimism. I remember I certainly did. I was talking about how excited I was that 2020 was going to be a fabulous year for all of us, excited about going on new positive adventures together and so forth. In a very short time, we hit a brick wall. I don't know about you, but that's how it felt to me. We were what we have termed before, I used to hear as a teenager growing up, we were sucker punched, which basically means you were punched in the face when you weren't looking. And that's kind of what happened, right? Maybe your head is spinning. Maybe you feel like you are in a bad movie that never ends or a, a bad story, right, that just isn't ending. So we're gonna talk about that. I wanna talk about your feelings. I wanna, I wanna hear from you and how you're feeling today. That's really important to me. 
So um, I just want to share with you a couple personal stories, and some of them you know, but I want to share these with you only because I am here to tell you, you will get through this. We will get through this. It doesn't matter how ugly our world gets. We have that ability to survive. And so quickly, let me remind you about 9-11, right? Of course, the difference with 9-11, there are a limited number of industries that were affected. And now we're in a position where there are hundreds of more, who knows, maybe thousands of industries that are being impacted by what is going on, you know, right now today. Um, But if you think about the feeling you had with September 11th, right, you were probably sick to your stomach about what had happened. You were probably in disbelief. You were probably in shock. Um, That's how I know a lot of us felt at that time, right? Hi, Lisa. (laughs) I'll try not to look in the chat because I want to say hi to all of you. Um, But anyhow, it's those feelings, you know, that I'm talking about that you may be experiencing again, and that's okay, and they will pass. In 2008, we had the economic downturn. Just when we thought we were rocking and rolling and life was going uh, along very nicely, And we were living our lives um, happily. And then we had 2008, right? And thinking about, you know, what that did to all of us and our economy. Many of us were affected during that time. And it did drag out. It did last, I don't even remember, maybe a few years, I think, before we truly, truly came out of it. But the point is, we came out of it. And then personally, for me, my biggest battles that I've had to deal with, where I had to muster up more courage than I've ever had to do in my entire life, um, was several years ago when my husband was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And when I heard that news, it was, I got those same ugly feelings, you know, inside. It felt like I, um, fell into a big black hole that had no bottom. I mean, it was a world I did not know. And I think we feel that way right now, right? We don't know this world, you know, that every morning we're having to wake up to and deal with and is changing minute by minute. But we got through that. We got through that. I got on the other side of that. Um, Yes, my husband did pass away, but he had a good fight for three years and it was a hard three years. But, you know, I came out on the other side of that and uh, life went on. And then many of you know, in 2014, I had brain surgery. I had a massive tumor. I found out about it in one day. I hadn't known it existed. And all of a sudden, boom, I was very sick. I was in the hospital. Along with it, I had bacterial meningitis, which is very dangerous. Um, not going into the long, long story about it. It was a long stretch for me. I really didn't think I was going to live, and I had a fight with all my might. And I came out of it, and I came on the other side of it. Um, thanks to great surgeons and doctors and my own will and my own determination to live. A year later, I found out I had to have open heart surgery. Boom. Again, sucker punched. Doesn't feel good. Brings up a lot of bad memories, you know, of what had happened prior to. Another long, long, hard road, but I came through that. So when we talk about VUCA, you know, I've been in that, that, Um, place many, many times where there was volatility, there was uncertainty, there was complexity, there was ambiguity. I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know how life was going to turn out. And there were times I felt like I wasn't going to live. So I'm here to confidently tell you, 
we are going to survive. We are going to get through this. We are going to get on the other side of this and we are going to rejoice. But what do you do in the meantime? So here's what we're going to cover today. I'm going to give you a short background on VUCA. Um, you know, what does it stand for and help you understand it a little bit more. It's complex, but you'll grasp it because I'm going to explain it to you in a very easy way. Secondly, um, I want to explore some of your personal feelings. I, I want you to, you know, let me know and in, in our your peers how you're feeling right now. We'll talk about that a little bit. Then we're going to get to the strategies. I have a lot of strategies for you today, and I want to make sure we delve into those. So first of all, VUCA. Let's look at what that stands for. And if you want to start taking some notes, <clears throat> it is an acronym. And um, that came about, uh, what was it, 11 years ago? It was after September 11th. And it was the military that came up with this term. And it's what it stood for. So let's look at, again, it stands for volatility uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity. They're, it's this combination of qualities that when they're taken together, and I'm reading from my notes because I don't want to mess up on this, characterize the nature of some difficult conditions and situations. So I'm going to read through and give you some characteristics of each of these four. And if you want to make notes of this so you can understand this, volatility is referring to the rate of change. So if you think about how quickly everything's changing right now, right, it is minute to minute. It's not even hour to hour anymore. Um, the explanation, the challenge is unexpected or unstable and maybe of unknown duration. So we don't know the duration of this either. Uncertainty is described as unclear about the present. So even right now, we could be right very unclear. And what I read is the reason is because there are no concrete trends or patterns that we can learn from that would dictate maybe what we have to do next. So again, this is um, very new to us, right? This is something we haven't experienced while we have had other diseases and so forth. This is still new to us and it's pretty unpredictable. Complexity, this is an interesting one. Multiple key decision factors. The situation has many interconnected parts and variables. Um, so if you think about that, I really, that one really struck me, the complexity, because there's all these interconnected variables, there's all these connections. Um, I view it as a huge, huge web um, of things. And so that makes it more difficult to deal with things. Ambiguity is lack of clarity about meaning of an event. And what it says is ambiguity describes a situation where multiple interpretations are permitted and equally valid. This makes it hard to decide what to do in order to achieve a desired outcome. So think about that. Multiple interpretations. So while we are getting all this information, maybe you're watching the news and the news, the media and newscasters, and you're watching the president, but what's our interpretation of what is being said? You know, so for example, the other day when the president was on and he said something about May stretch in to July or August, people totally didn't hear the word May stretch in and went bonkers with running to the markets and hoarding food and, and doing all kinds of insane things, thinking that it's gonna stretch out till August. So one word of advice really quickly right now, I just wanna share with you, listen to every word that is being said um, 
a, from a trusted source. Listen to the words. Don't don't just only take bits and pieces and now you've made your own assumptions in the way you're interpreting things. And it's the same thing, you know, when you're you're communicating with your leaders and your teammates. Make sure you're paying attention. Make sure you're thoroughly reading the emails. Make sure you're thoroughly uh, reading any messages that are being sent to you as employees and so forth. So I'm going to show you a visual a moment. I just found this the other day, and it really helped me understand. So I know it's going to look backwards to you, but I'll kind of walk you through it. So basically, volatility. We could have low volatility and high. So right now, volatility is high, right? Low uncertainty or high uncertainty. I mean, look at that gap. We're in high uncertainty. Low complexity. Do you see there's just a few components of the web? Here's high complexity. Just look at that visual. All right, a lot of inter interconnected variables. Low ambiguity, high ambiguity, very, very fuzzy. We're not sure. So VUCA has been around for a very long time, a volatile uh, workplace. This has been going on for years, but what it says in the research is there are times where you may only have high volatility and all these other pieces are low. So it's not as bad. Or you could have high in two areas, low in two areas. But right now, we are high in all four. All four. So again, if your head is spinning, if your leader's heads are spinning, that's why it's happening. Okay, so I hope that helps you understand it. So to go through the words again, some of you are wondering what VUCA stands for. They're all capital letters. Volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. All right. Um, now, I want you, going back again years ago, your leaders started learning about this a very long time ago. This is not new to leadership. So they have learned the tools over the years how to deal with this um, and how to manage uh, leading employees through VUCA. So one thing I would like to encourage you on is to trust in your leadership team. They are doing the very best that they can. I am sure many of your top leaders have had solid training about disease. We've had the economic challenges. There have been other challenges that have gone on that they have led your company through. So trust in your leadership. All right, a quick question before we get to the strategies. Then we're gonna jump into strategies. What words would you use to describe how you are feeling right now? I'm curious. Um, it might be right now in this moment, or it might be right now in this period of time. How have you been feeling? What words would you use to describe your feelings or your thoughts? Scared for sure. Anxious unsettled, overwhelmed, bored, <laughs> frustrated, curious, helpless, wow, stressed, torn, fatigued, sleepless, sad, challenged, creative, that's good, staying busy at home, uncertain, afraid, anxious, Disconnected, wow, right? We feel very disconnected, especially maybe if you have to work from home and you're used to going to the office all the time and being with your peers. And even though you, you might be at home with people, we still feel a disconnect, definitely worried. I can relate to all of your feelings. I love your feelings though of faithful, grateful, 
being very grateful for whatever we do have right now. The fact that maybe those of us on this webinar, we're healthy, we're able to participate with each other. Um, thankful for our technology, correct? Our office is taking attendance. Wow, interesting. All right, feeling orphaned. Well, I appreciate you sharing all your feelings. They're, they're very real. And uh, I think it's good that we do talk about our feelings, the good and the bad feelings that we have. All right, let's get to the strategies. Or I guess, Malia, we're going to do a quick poll really quick. Are you all right with doing that, Malia? Yes, it's up. You're there. Okay. So I just want to take a very quick poll. And the question is, and it'll pop up, right? Marlia, is that correct? <laughs> it, it should the be yeah, they're answering. I guess they're I'm answering to the poll tab. Have you been required to work from home? And I mean, absolutely required where you don't have a choice. That's what I'd like to know. So let's see what comes in. Are you able to see it, John? I can. So 70, we're up to 74%. Yes. Wow. Wow. Okay. So, all right. Thank you. That That's a large number, which um, I somewhat anticipated it. I really wasn't sure. And I wanted to get a feel for that because um, I'm also working on, um, gathering together some information and materials and different things for you on how to work you know from home what are some good strategies and tips i already have a blog i'm working on that uh, hopefully we're going to post in a day or two um sorry if i'm tripping over my words i i have so much that i want to share and and talk to you about today so let's do a new poll the second poll i want to ask has your industry been immediately affected by COVID-19, yes or no? So some industries like us, we were impacted immediately within a week because of course we had live events going on, um, you know, this month, next month. So I'm curious, depending on your industry, wow. Look at those numbers, people. That's huge. Um, I really wasn't sure where we were with that. So so it's like 80, 20 almost. Ooh. All right, well, thank you for participating in the poll. I'm going to get into the strategies and the tips. So I was doing deeper research on VUCA. I mean, I, I was aware of it for quite a while, but as always, I like to dig deep and do my research for you. And what I learned is there are, you know, some different skills we have to use when we're operating in, in the age of VUCA or the, the moment of VUCA. So here they are. Are you ready? Number one, or one of the ideas, and one of the skills you have to develop and be willing to do is to experiment. Okay, test new ideas. We don't know right now what is going to work and what is not going to work. I mean, we just don't know. This is a, a strange time, a strange world. So be willing to test new ideas. Don't say no right away. Don't say, well, we never did that before. We're not in the same place as we were even a month ago. All right, so that's one idea, experiment. And also I'm just thinking <clears throat> it might be a good idea for you to take notes during this webinar and as great assistance, type up, this information and send it out to your team so that everybody can maybe get on the same page. This is a way you uh, work through these critical times together. 
The next thing is to truly open your mind to all perspectives, all possibilities. You've really, we all, we just have to be open-minded right now. And then if we are open-minded, again, having that willingness to test, to try. Um, Jean, new ideas to help support your patients. Great. So um, I think a part of that possibility is in opening your mind is even on your own. If you're not doing it with others, open your mind to the, to the new skills now you have to develop. Open your mind to new thoughts, to new processes. Uh, if you have that time to do your research, this is a great time to dig deeper and learn more about things maybe you never had time to learn about as well. Can we get notes from this because it's cutting in and out a lot? All right. I have a feeling it may have to do with where you are right now. And again, if you're working from home, you may be having more difficulty. So let's go on to the next. Seek out alternative viewpoints. The key word is seek. Don't wait for people to share a viewpoint to you. Talk to people. Initiate and talk. What I mean is talking on the phone. If you're doing Zoom meetings, if you're doing FaceTime, you may not be in the office, but you know what I'm saying and seek out viewpoints. Ask people, what is your view of this? What's your perspective of this? What do you think about this? This is the time for you to take the initiative, not sit back. Listen is the next. Listen to contradictory ideas and concepts. So when we're in the world of VUCA, it's not just listening, it's listening to contradictory ideas, ideas that might sound foreign to you or concepts that you're going to think, oh, that is, that's just too out there. Listen, take it in, process it, have an open mind, be willing to experiment, be willing to try. So do you see how they kind of, some of them could fall into order. The next information gathering I read is very important. Um, but what I want to say here is be careful of your source. Okay. We might be gathering a lot of information right now. And especially if you're home, maybe you've got that news feed going all day. You're taking in information or you're reading, but um, just double check your source, make sure the information is accurate. So perfect example, it happened to us the other day, this group I belong to. I belong to a Vistage group, which is for CEOs and business owners. We have 12 in our immediate group. And of course, we're all on email constantly sending information to each other back and forth, whatever we're learning, whatever we're hearing, words of advice and tips, right? So one of our members sent us this information that supposedly was from a prominent um, medical university, thinking it was a very credible source. She sent us this whole list that had to do with the COVID-19 and all these things we should be doing and so forth. And I read it, I passed it on to my staff, right? I think it was 10 minutes later, we got an email from this member saying, it was a hoax. She was so sorry. She didn't realize it. It was a hoax. So really be careful. Check out the sources. Double check the sources before, and especially before you share information, because then I felt bad. And I will go back and repeat some of these. So if you miss something, I will go back. All right, let's go on more strategies when you're working in the world of VUCA. Be okay with being uncomfortable. We've been in, maybe you've been in, I've been in my comfort zone for quite a while. I mean, really, things were rolling along. Life was going great. I was comfortable. Um, and whenever you go through these times, and again, I relate back to my personal experiences. After many, it took me a while. It took me a while. 
to get comfortable being uncomfortable. It's okay to, to feel that way. It's okay. So just keep telling yourself, I don't like this feeling maybe, I don't like where I am, but this is kind of where I am right now. It is what it is. And also to tell yourself it will pass. So as we're trying to be comfortable in the uncomfortable, it's really important what we say to ourselves. We can acknowledge the feeling, I'm scared, I'm, I'm, I'm frustrated, whatever that might be. And then work on your self-talk. This will pass. Nothing lasts forever. You know, nothing, not even the good times, unfortunately. Um, say things like, I am strong. I am confident. I have a strong inner circle to support me. I mean, use that positive language, okay? Limit how much news you take in. It could be very depressing um, if you sit and just listen to the news or you're following that news feed all day. And, in, and if you're home, you may be even more tempted. Or if there are members you know, in your household, other people in your household, who have the news on constantly all day long or running into and oh, did you hear this? And did you hear that? You, you can get depressed in two minutes. I know I certainly can, two minutes. And I, it could just bring me down and I don't need that right now. So the strategy here is to be aware, be cognizant, know what's going on and then turn it off and get to work and put your mind on things that you can control and be productive because there's nothing else you can do. I mean, you can, you could sit around and eat cookies all day if you want to, but what does that do? And then you feel really crummy at the end of the day because you did that. The next step for VUCA, be ready and willing to learn and take on new information as it arises. I know as assistants, you are really good about this because you have to do this in normal situations anyways, right? So as we have new information coming in, and again, I'm, I'm talking about business. Now let's talk about the business world because many of you are working from home as that new information is filtering in. You've got to quickly adapt, right? Quickly change your course. And again, this is one area that I feel assistants are very skilled at already. You are always on the front lines having to deal with chaos. It's just gone up now several notches. Okay, some other strategies. This is a good one uh, that I read for VUCA. Take a complex situation and break it down into little pieces. So remember our chart with complexity and you've got this all over. Take one piece and break it down into little pieces. If you try to deal with all of this, you are going to feel overwhelmed and stressed and feel like you don't have any sense of direction. That's what we're trying to do here in my office. And I think we're doing a pretty good job of it. We're trying to stay on that regularly. Let's take a piece right now and break it down into little pieces. So whether you're working alone or you're working with the team, that's something you can apply. Uh, all right, this is for you and your leaders specifically to assistants and executives and working with the people you support, you need to come to consensus on approaches and processes. When things are moving this fast, we've got to change processes. We maybe have to change our approaches to things. The way we did things don't work anymore. We have to operate differently. So you want to change your approaches and processes to first this entire situation, to working remotely with each other, correct? Um, and actually at the end of the program, I'm gonna tell you about a survival series I'm starting next week, a very special program, a micro learning class, and I'm gonna spend a whole module on how to work with your executives remotely, um, or even if you're in the office, what to do. And then, the on the spot problems you and your manager need to agree how you're going to handle 
that problem or that situation at the moment. So communication with your executives and your managers right now are more important than they have ever, ever been. And I wanna encourage you, even if you're working remotely, pick up the phone, schedule a time to talk on the phone with your executive or, or via FaceTime, it doesn't matter. But don't just rely on emails right now. That is not the best form of communication when you're in these types of situations. All right, the last um, new timely skill for VUCA for assistance that you may not think about often is pay attention to cause and effect. You know, here's the cause, you know, here, here's what causing this particular thing, here's the effect it has. And I would add to that, anticipate where it's going to go from that so you can be proactive. So two little tidbits under that. Under your personal life, delve into what is the cause of your fear? Really, what is the cause of it? Is it the virus right now? Is it the fear of getting sick? Is it the fear of losing your job? I mean, dig into the cause of those feelings you have and deal with them. And then see the effect they're having on you in your life. So realize that anxiety, what is it doing to you? What is it doing to how you're acting with others? You know, I'm not saying it's not real, just see what that causes of it. What is the cause of it, of the fear, the anxiety? And you'll say, oh, well, of course the coronavirus. No, dig deeper. And we teach this actually in our Star Achievement Series. I teach assistants how to face their fears and dig through a fear in a very practical way and how to work through that. Um, second within that, what could be the positive effect if you walk with courage and focus? So don't just look at the negative side of it. Think about what's the effect if you walk through this with staying positive, if you stay in, in with hope, or for those of you who are believers, staying in faith, you're gonna have a different outcome, right? It's gonna be different. So be very attuned into where you are mentally and emotionally because it has an effect. All right, now I'm gonna share with you skills that are timeless. These are skills that have been around forever. These are skills that I have been teaching for 30 years to assistants and have lived in my own life. These never ever go away. So these are for you, these are timeless. You can trust what I'm gonna tell you right now. So first of all, as I said, Self-talk is very important. Use positive affirmations every single day. And all I'm gonna share with you quickly too, two years ago, I went through a, a really, really bad time that I didn't even mention to you. Um, lost a lot of people I loved in a very short time, just all kinds of chaos. And I, I was depressed. I mean, I went through true depression um, and it was very painful. I didn't even want to get out of bed, not at all. But I can tell you what started to help me is I, my sister, first of all, helped me too. And that was taking post-its, post-it notes. And every post-it note had a positive affirmation, a strong affirmation. And they were posted everywhere in my house, even in my refrigerator. My sister had put one in the refrigerator. So when I opened the refrigerator door, there it was. It was in my bathroom, in my bedroom, on my office computers. They were everywhere in the world. And I would say them, even though I didn't maybe believe them inside, I would say them religiously. And before I knew it, I started coming out of it. So these things work. I'm telling you, they work and you can do this. All right. Let's, I'll keep going because I know I want to take your questions. Second, live in gratitude. We've talked about that. I keep this right by my desk in the office. That I see this all day. 
it says, it is only with gratitude that life becomes rich. I am grateful for you. Things are, are tough, but I am so grateful for you. I'm so grateful for my team. I mean, I'm grateful I have teeth to chew, to chew the food. Right? So there are always things that we can be grateful for. All right. Malia and I love this one. So let me position it first, Malia. And you've got to come on screen with me. But um, I don't know if many of you know that I... I was blessed to work with Disney World two years ago, and I'm very, very close to Disney World and all the people down there. And I love the Magic Kingdom. So uh, what we've been doing around here, Malia and I, <laughs> we put on our, our beautiful ears here. And so the tip for you is to make happy moments even if it's just in your mind we put on our ears right malia we yes. have bad news or something's come in or that we're hearing about and we're like okay let's put on our ears we're in our happy place we're at the magic kingdom and we have all this pixie dust around us and before you know it we're smiling right we're laughing we're like okay let's let's go tackle that whatever it is we're gonna do it go get yourself some mouse ears <laughs> how good you will feel <laughs> right malia yes <laughs> and the sparkles help and we love the sparkles yes, yes. <laughs> so that that's the idea go create some happy moments lighten up your household do it with your family and your kids all right next focus on this moment you know that that's all we have is this moment so that's another strategy don't think about a week from now two weeks from now three weeks from now um i have just what four more and then we're gonna get to your questions this is a good one. Balance reality with optimism. This is a basic element of resiliency. So be realistic, but, but have optimism. I mean, some people are so sadly realistic. It's sad. They don't know how to balance. Okay, here's what, what's happening in being an optimist. It's very, very important right now. Um, accept the changes. I mean, there are so many things we just have no control over right now. And it's hard to be told we have to stay at home and we can't go to the gym and we can't do certain things. So the sooner we just accept it and say, okay, this is how it is, right? And we're going to move on. Dig your feet in the ground mentally. So what I mean by that is picture yourself, you know, on solid, let's say solid ground, okay? and you're digging your feet in as deep as you can, mentally. So as the waves of change and changes come at you and they're thrown at you, you've got your feet very, very solid, but it's in your mind. And yeah, the punches are coming, but you're determined that you're going to, to stand and handle them the best you can. And then the last one, I think this is especially important for all of us to counter isolation. So we are very isolated and isolation, uh, feelings of isolation can lead to some serious problems. So I wanna encourage you, thank goodness we have FaceTime, Zoom, we have other tech tools, talk on the telephone, you know, pick up the telephone and talk to people. Isolation has never ever been good for us as human beings. So do whatever you can to connect with each other. All right, Malia, I am ready. I'm going to stop. Let's go to questions. I know I've talked a lot. Um, Hi. <laughs> yes. Okay. So first off, I want to say when we put the ears on, somebody else said that they have a princess tiara. That also works. <laughs> Yay. Oh, yes. Princess tiaras are wonderful. Yes, they are. Okay. So Veronica would like to know, how do I remain visible and prove my worth? without being visible as a presence in the office? Oh, that's a very good question. So uh, the visibility will have to come through, um, through email communications. You know, I think instead of being silent, 
even if it's just to, to send out an email that is letting everyone know you're thinking about them and provide a tip for the day. I mean, uh, again, it's maybe not just, hi, how are you? I'm thinking of you because people might be avidly having to work on something. If we could provide a, a tip, a strategy, maybe some of the strategies you heard today, you could send you know, a tip of the day or a, uh, maybe weekly send out something. So that's one way to stay in front of people. Um, right now, I'd say I think that's the best way because if that's the only tool you have to communicate, if there are any ways uh, or any methods you could use to create um, again, some of those face-to-face -face meetings may be using Zoom and, and saying, okay, everybody, how about every Friday we huddle together, either as a department or as a team, but again, be the initiator. Don't wait for others to do it. If you initiate, I believe, ways of staying in contact, that's how you will stay visible to people. And they'll also value um, and really appreciate you taking that initiative. Awesome. Okay, and Judith would like to know, well, Judith states that she started a new job and on the fourth day she was told to work from home. So how can she be proactive since she's not at the firm? Um, again, uh, I believe through um, asking questions through emails, gosh, being a new employee. Actually, we have a new employee here, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yay, Sarah. She just started with us a week ago Tuesday. The difference is, though, we are able to come into the office. Um, as a new employee, I would spend time reading whatever you possibly can about your organization, one thing, to make use of this time, maybe when you're not real busy yet, in digging into the mission, the vision, um, the, either the services or products. I mean, really take advantage of this time because when you get back in the office and you're busy, you're not gonna have time to do that. Uh, look at who are your com your company's competitors, You know, thinking about your industry that you're in. What I'm basically saying is now is the time to arm yourself with all the knowledge you possibly can. So when you go back into the office, you're already ahead of that learning curve and you'll be able to have intelligent conversations with your with your managers or executives or the people you report to. Um, if you have any other ideas, assistance, jump in the chat. The other way, of course, is to um, have the email communications with the person you report to and maybe have thoughtful, put your, your emails together thoughtfully, I'm thinking, instead of sending them a bunch of emails throughout the day maybe create a list of questions that you have that you need to be uh, educated on and learn. Another great thing that you could ask about um, in an email, or if you can get on the telephone, I hope with your immediate supervisor, is finding out their preferences on how they like to work with you, how they would like to work with you. I think that's a really good question that you could start um, gaining some edge on. Yes, yes. Uh, Cindy says, um, my executive is in crisis mode, slash, slashing budget, excuse me. How can I help support him when we are both working from home? Uh, so, wow, there is a lot of ants. There are a lot of answers <laughs> to that. Um, and I can't, I can't. I know take the time right now. There are a lot of ideas because as I had mentioned earlier, I have just put together a micro learning course that's gonna launch next Tuesday. Um, and one of the sessions you know, has to do with how to work with your executive. And, and the biggest thing that I'm gonna teach in that course is you know, the communication. You've gotta have that ongoing constant communication is key right now whether that communication is, again, one, you definitely should, should be having a couple times a day where you are on the phone with each other, or again, you FaceTime each other, but you are talking to each other. Now, I know he is in crisis mode, right? I get that. He's in crisis mode. He's got to cut expenses. Never easy to do um, as a business owner or as a leader and, and that type of thing. And it's very intense work. 
However, you really have to get uh, your executive into having that talking conversation with you and staying connected with each other. And I would ask the questions, what do you need from me right now? You know, um, what could I get started for you? A ask those types of questions, not like, do you need help? Because you could just say, no, I've got too much going on. I can't even think about giving, you know, telling you what I need. But if you say, what could I get started for you? What's your next priority? What can I, do you need, who should I reach out to for you? I mean, ask those types of questions where he might have to give you an answer. The other thing, still under the communication umbrella, giving each other status updates throughout the day and maybe more you than him. But um, really the key, you've, you've got to touch base a couple times a day because everything is moving so quickly. I think the other way you could help, are there any um, ways or are there any things you're involved in that you could help with cost cutting? So I, I don't know what you have access to, um, but if there are any areas that you could dig in or maybe do the research for your executive, if he's trying to cut expenses, are there any vendors you can reach out to on his behalf? So, you know, start thinking that way. Is there anywhere you could jump in in that space and help with expenses and reducing expenses? And along the same lines, Penny was asking, uh, how would you encourage them to communicate more? Do you have tips on like encouraging your executive to, you know, communicate better with everybody who's working from home? Yeah, what I would do seriously, you just learned about this. You learned about, if you're on here, you learned about VUCA. I would use this because um, th this is powerful. And it shows them that you, you're you aware of this verbiage. You know, they should know what this means. And so if you were to express in writing, because right now, like what I would say, because right now we are living the world of VUCA, Volat you know, the volatility, the uncertainty, the complexity, the ambiguity, and there are a lot of moving pieces you and I need to talk more than ever, you know, more than ever, that the, the emails going back and forth, you could have miscommunication, misinterpretation. So you need to explain and help them understand the negative domino effect by not communicating. But I definitely would use this because right now at this time, we are in this world of the uncertainty and the complexity. We have to have dialogue. And, and, you know, and you need to say it a little sternly. I mean, you have to have a firm voice. It's because they are so busy, but you need to be the one. You have to believe it first. Believe that you need this communication, that they need this communication and come across that way. Not like, well, if you have time, I'd like to talk to you today. No, we need to talk today. There are a lot of moving pieces. Do you see the difference? Awesome. Okay, uh, Danette, Danette, I hope I said that right. Would like to know if you have any tips or suggest suggestions for unemployed, unemployed folks in prolonged job search for EA and now the market's flooded with disruptive pandemic. If you're, um, well, right now, definitely, it's gonna be very difficult, right? Because there aren't jobs out there. Yes. I would wisely use this time to develop yourself to whatever classes, online courses you could take, uh, anything you could do, you need to stay skilled. You need to keep yourself updated because when this is over, there's going to be a lot of people looking for jobs and you want to have a competitive advantage. You want to show that during this time, how, you know, whatever that's going to be for you to be able to say, I, I took this course and I took that course and I read this and I read that, you know, that type of thing. So continue your education. Um, look at your work on your LinkedIn profile. If you have one, polish it up, make it perfect. Uh, I talk about career portfolios all the time you need to start putting together a career portfolio i mean you need to build your tools 
in your tool kit. So when this does release and jobs start opening up, you can be on the forefront. Yes, great. Uh, Joan? Oh, well, maybe, oh, sorry. One other thing though, <laughs> thinking about, of course, if you need you know, some income coming in, can you do any virtual assistant work? Can you, can you offer maybe to other people who are used to having maybe a full-time assistant and now they can't pay that full-time salary, you okay. can maybe do some virtual work and, and offer it at a really um, affordable price. Okay. Uh, Joan says that she is finding that working from mm -hmm. home, she's working a lot more hours starting earlier in the morning and later into the evening. What is your advice on setting boundaries? Have going back to having, you know, communication with your leader, I think is very important. Um, and finding out, do they expect you to respond to email after hours? That's the key question. So, you know, when I think about that, there are a lot of assistants who, you know, they're naturally checking, like you're putting in longer days, maybe like you said, you said you are, and you're checking emails and being pulled into email. So the question I would have for your executive or your manager, do they expect you to respond after hours and before hours? You know, that I don't know. Now, if it's communications with your executive, they may want you to because of your business and your industry. And if you're in different time zones, you may have to do that, right? That's the first thing. Remember I said, be very clear right now with your executives on how you're going to approach uh, the changing situations, just your basic office protocol. How are you going to manage email, follow-ups, all of that, your basic processes and get clear direction from them. Now, if they say, yes, I expect you to be available and check email at seven in the morning, then you've got to, um, I guess, really have that discussion with your executive. And if that's what it takes right now, I would say that's what it takes. We have to roll up our sleeves. We have to get through this. But also then that kind of gets into fair compensation in terms of hourly employees, as I know, are supposed to be paid if they're putting in extra hours at work, even if it's at home and, and working on emails. So you also have to look at the HR side of it. And I would talk to your HR people if you're an hourly employee. All right, let's take... Um, I just have one more. Yes, I just think that communications is fine. You know, that that's the tool to use all the time. But again, if you spend that time putting together a message as to how that hinders you. And then also the benefits, if you have those communications, those talking communications, as I call them, the benefits, such as you're able to immediately clarify what you think your executive has asked of you. Um, you're able to, well, things may come up that you wouldn't think about in just that normal emailing back and forth, but because you're having that dialogue, when you converse with each other, it gives you a chance to clarify priorities. I mean, what, what your executive thinks is the A priority right now, and you think is the A may not be such. So when you have that, um, that talking, you know, talking with each other, you can say, let me understand, these are the top three A priorities for the day. As the CEO of Office Dynamics, I have always tried to be responsive to what is going on in the moment and the needs of administrative professionals. So I am very excited to announce that I have very quickly put together a micro learning series for you to help you during this time to quickly give you the tools and advice that you need. So here it is. Let me tell you about this course. It is called Survival Tactics for Administrative Professionals During Chaotic Times. There will be six 30-minute live sessions with me. They will start March 24th. I'll have uh, two classes a week. 
So on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I will do the live session. It will last three weeks because again, I want to get this information to you as quickly as possible. If you cannot attend the live uh, session, please sign up anyways, as you will get the recordings. You'll have unlimited access to them. Let's see what else. Uh, let me tell you about the topics. They are Embrace the Warrior Mindset, Working in Tandem with Your Leader. And the one thing I want to say about that, even if you are used to working remotely with your executive, these are different times. So I'm sure I still can give you some nuggets. Timely and effective communications, being resilient during turbulent times, riding the wave of change, and the last session is self-management and personal care. Uh, again, we're going to start on March 24. Um, I have worked very hard to make this program affordable for you. I know that there's some strain on budgets right now. So the cost is $59 for six 30-minute courses. Again, all the recordings, unlimited access. To register, just go to officedynamics.com and click on the home page banner. You'll see it, it's right there. So that's all you have to do. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for participating in today's webinar. It's been a very meaty topic. And please uh, be sure to check your inbox because we're gonna have more free webinars for you. We're gonna um, be doing some other special things to help you during this time. Bye-bye.